Good day everyone. Today we are going to be discussing about the soil compaction. In the construction of highway embankments, earth dams and many other engineering structures, loose soils must be compacted to increase their unit weights. Compaction increases the strength characteristics of soils, which increase the bearing capacity of foundation constructed over them. Compaction also decreases the amount of undesirable settlements of structures and increases the stability of slope of embankments. Okay, so now let us discuss the principles of compaction using the figure on the screen. Compaction in general is the densification of soil by removal of air which requires mechanical energy. Let us consider this part as our soil solid. The degree of compaction of a soil is measured in terms of its dry unit weight. When water is added during compaction, it acts as a softening agent on the soil particles. The soil particles slip over each other and move into a densely packed position. The dry unit weight after compaction first increases as the moisture content increases. When the moisture content is gradually increased and the same compactive effort is used for compaction, the weight of the soil solids in a unit volume gradually increases. Again, gradually increasing the water content of a soil, the unit weight of the soil will also increase until it reaches a certain point on which the maximum dry unit weight of the soil is attained, corresponding to a certain amount of moisture content W sub 2. In this figure, W sub 2 is called the optimum moisture content or the moisture content at which the maximum dry unit weight is attained. Beyond the optimum moisture content, any increase in the moisture content tends to reduce the dry unit weight. This is because the water takes up the spaces that would have been occupied by the solid particles. The laboratory tests generally used to obtain the maximum dry unit weight of compaction and optimum moisture content is called the Proctor Compaction Test and the Modified Proctor Compaction as you can see here in our figure. Let us talk about the Standard Proctor Test. In the Proctor Test, the soil is compacted in a mold that has a volume of 943.3 cubic centimeter. The diameter of the mold is 101.6 millimeter. During the laboratory test, the mold is attached to a base plate at the bottom and to an extension at the top, as you can see here in our figure. The soil is mixed with varying amounts of water and then compacted in three equal layers by a hammer. The hammer is what you can see on the right side in our screen. The hammer delivers 25 blows in each layer. The hammer weighs 24.4 newton or approximately 2.5 kilogram in mass and has a drop of 304.8 millimeter. For each test, the moist unit weight of compaction is equal to W over the V sub M, where the W is equal to the weight of compacted soil in the mold, and the V sub M is the volume of the mold equal to 94.3 cubic centimeter. For each test, the moisture content of the compacted soil is determined in the laboratory. With the known moisture content, the dry unit weight can be calculated as dry unit weight equal to moist unit weight over 1 plus moisture content. The values of the dry unit weight determined from the previous equation can be plotted against the corresponding moisture content to obtain the maximum dry unit weight and optimum moisture content for the soil. Here in this figure, it shows a compaction for a 
silty clay soil using the standard Proctor compaction test. The procedure for the standard Proctor test is given in ASTM test designation D698 and ASTO test designation T99. For a given moisture content, the theoretical dry unit weight is obtained when there is no air in the void spaces. That is when the degree of saturation is equal to 100%. Thus, the maximum dry unit weight at a given moisture content with zero air voids can be given as zero air void unit equal to specific gravity multiplied to unit weight of water all over 1 plus the void ratio. When the soil is at its 100% saturation, the void ratio is equal to the moisture content multiplied to the specific gravity. Therefore, the zero air void ratio will be equal to specific gravity multiplied to unit weight of water all over 1 plus moisture content multiplied to specific gravity. To obtain the variation of the zero air void unit weight with no moisture content, we shall use the following procedures. Number one, determine the specific gravity of the soil solids. Number two, know the unit weight of the water. Number three, assume several values of the moisture content such as 5%, 10%, 15%, and so on. And number four, use the equation on the screen to calculate the zero air void unit weight for various values of moisture content. Here in our figure, we can see a standard Proctor test results for a silty clay. Here is the value of the dry unit weight and the moisture content plotted. As the moisture content increases, the dry unit weight of a soil also increases. As you can see here in our screen, until it reach a certain point on which the maximum dry unit weight is attained, corresponding to the optimum moisture content. So, additional moisture content will decrease the maximum dry unit weight. Yan. Now, if we consider a saturated soil, we can compute for the zero air void unit weight. So here is the graph for that consideration. 